Okay, so we're going to use the Nita Angle colors. I've wet the back, wet the front, and there's two choices on my palette. I have Windsor Yellow, which is a very bright but staining color, and then I have Areolan Yellow, which is also very bright and non-staining. And I've decided to do non-staining because if I want to lift something, I can. With a staining color, it, you can't lift it. It goes in and it's, it's forever. And because I'm going to go right through these trees, see I didn't mask anything and this tree is white, I'm just going to come, I'm not going to worry about it, I'm just going to go maybe try to avoid it a little bit. But see I also want some of this color coming in around, around here too. So this is just an underpaint. Now I'm going to take Quinn Coral. It's not as pink as Permanent Rose or Quinacridone Rose, which is a much pinker color. I like this. It's, it's a little oranger. And you can see I'm taking it from the well. Never go from the well right into this. Never. You always activate it, especially if you've got fresh paint because you're going to have streaks. So now I'm going to start inside my circle and I'm going to go around it and I'm also going to have some of this come out here. I'm not worried about the edge of the circle I'm just because it's going to just go do whatever it wants to do. So now I'm coming in like this. I don't want these to be perfect circles. Now for the third color, I'm going to take cobalt blue. This is a perfect blue. It has no yellow in it, no red in it. And see, this goes outside. Out here. And one of the things, cobalt is so independent. It won't mix with yellow, it won't mix with red. It just wants to be blue. So see what I did? I put it next to some yellow and next to some red. And you now I'm going to have green with another color. I right? should, but it probably won't. Because it's cobalt. Yeah. What and it's Windsor it? cobalt. No. Well, meaning I put Windsor Daniel Smith's. Yeah. It's a it's a different piece. No, it's gotta be really wet. If you don't have your paper really, really wet, I I should have probably even done this. I could see my drying edges because I've been talking so much. But if you put these colors down and you haven't really wet your paper, all of a sudden the colors are staining. When you go to spray this away, you're going to see some stain marks. So what I want to do now, I'll take a picture at this stage and then I'm going to show it at the next stage. Remember, you can just do this and you're in your camera. It doesn't work every single time. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work every time, but you can try. I, that's all I can do. Okay, now when I want this to come out, I'm going to put a little bit darker here. I'm going to start with the center of my light source. And I'm going to start from the center, not above, because that'll pull the blue in. I want this to be the lightest, brightest. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to spray out towards the edge. And see how the colors now are starting to move? And that's what I want. I want to get this to move a little bit, even some coming in here. So I think I'm going to go to the other side this time. And I'm going to start in the center of my source and let those colors go. So from all the way around, I'm going to start from the center and go out. And just let these colors do their thing. From here, coming out. Sometimes I get really close because I want to push that away. See right now, push that away. And I like all this fun stuff. But you really get the focus of light. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. And now from the light source, this is really important. Start at the light source and then go out. Mm -hmm. 
And then I usually kind of rock the baby, stabilize it a little bit. So I'm turning it slowly on all sides because it's so wet. And it's slowly starting to stabilize. And as soon as I see it, it's kind of stable. Look, if I do it like this and I don't see it running, which it doesn't, I'm just going to take a chance now and set it down. So this is, this is what I'd hope for. See, I like to get a little glow of that color down here. It's a little bit on the dark side here. If I want to make that into water, which I do, it's starting to look like night. So I think what I'm going to do is lift out a little color in, in the water area. And I have to do that very close. So I'm, look at I'm almost touching the paper. And I'm just saying, come on, we're going to clean you right up. And this is going to be water. Wow. So we're just going to let it run out. I'm picking up the big gobs here. Nice. And then if I want to, I can even take a tissue. Because now I'm going to start designing my painting. And I'm, it's not going to be realism. So I do want a, a horizon line back here. So it's not unlike what we did when we did those. Yep. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you remember when we did that with our Kleenex. Kleenex, yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I am spraying it again because I want to keep it wet. But I did want to lift away a little bit of that horizon line. I think I might do it again. I was a little shy. Now what I'm doing now is I'm allowing a little bit of this to set. And then I'm going to take my circle, which thank you very much. And if you wanted to crunch this, you'd get t even more texture. I don't want to crunch it. And I'm also going to take my flat brush before I do this. And I'm going to lift out the color that went into my birch tree. This is called the thirsty brush. And see, I don't mind if there's a little color in it. I'm not. Some people would mask it, and that's just unnecessary. Because look, mm. it's so light. It's not really not that important. And this is actually going to be a dark tree, but I like to, it just feels good to lift some of that out of there. And even down here if I want to, I can lift away some light patterns. And now while the paper is still wet, I'm going to put this down on the circle. Are you still paying attention to a grain, the grain of it, or nope? I don't know. I don't have a clue. Okay. I just put her down. That's a good question, though. So I'm, and it, it's, it's only going to stay here if it's wet, and it's going to create patterns. See, my paper when it's wet is doing this. I'm probably going to get some patterns I won't like. It's also going to create patterns going either this way or that way. So. It's, it's like your kids. You gotta, you gotta like what you get. <laughs> and now I'm going to take wax paper. And I'm happy to share this with anybody who would like it. I'm also going to put some wax paper down on these rocks. And they're not going to be perfect. I don't care about that. I'm just, I can just sort of guess at what size and shape they are. And so I'm doing these individually like this for a reason, because I'm going to feed color into them. So I'm just putting one next to another. And the cool thing is, see, I can just take color. I could take rock colors. And rock colors are warm and cool. So if I want to just take a little Quinn burnt orange here, I can just roll that in under the rocks. 
So you don't mind changing your color scheme from your nope, original? No, this, this is no, nope, this is still. These are still kind of realistic colors, and then I'm going to feed in a little blue because that when you take orange and blue, they gray. So I want that's what I want. I want these to be gray grayish rocks. Which blue? The cobalt. And see, I'm tipping it, and the tipping is going to allow for it to go down. And that's still the Quinn Rose, or Quinn Coral. Coral. Yeah, no, Burnt this was Quinn Burnt Orange yeah. and Cobalt. Okay. So now I've got a straight rock here, kind of on one side. So I'm just going to put this down. And they're all individual so that I can feed the color underneath. Just let it go do its own thing. Sometimes I'll just add more water to it and then that'll just make it move a little more. So this is Quinn Burnt Orange and Cobalt Blue. And we're just going to let it feed. Sometimes you have to Create some of the patterns to get the colors to move. That's better. And then I'm just going to come in here with some colors and put down some more rocky shapes. So in between here. So those are ones without the wax paper. They're going to get it. Oh. I'm just going to do it first. Just so you can do it two ways. You can. Just put it and let the color do its thing. Or you could just put it down and then rip papers and put it on. So I'm probably just going to let these colors do their thing here and run off the page into the blue. I kind of like that. So now I'm just going to take some little papers because these are also rocks. These are little pieces I ripped off. <laughs> and we'll just put a few more. And it's actually rocky under here too. And I may decide to put collage paper on this. This is just an underpainting. But I'll tell you, if you want rocks, wax paper is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And you can decide if the rocks are going up or down because the wax paper forms uh, a shape and it becomes a straight shape. So your rocks can be going this way or this way or anything in between. There is definitely a grain. And I haven't worried a bit about it, but it is something you could do. I'll, of course, be painting the trees later. I've got a real fun way to paint the birch trees that I think you'll love. I think some salt would be fun. I'm going to throw a little salt in between. I, I use table salt. It's my favorite. And then over here, I wanted to do some stamping. And these tree stamps are fabulous. So I'm going to take a flat brush. And I'm only going to use these little stamp, these little trees. They're about this high. And I should go buy a new one because this one has got Do you want to grab me another one and I'll share it? We can share them. This one's a little better. So to do the, sh the colors back here, I'm going to take a little indigo. Can you see my palette? Let me move it over here. This is indigo. And I'm going to take some Quinn Gold. And see, it gives you kind of a greeny, a real grayed down greeny color, which would be like distant trees. And then using my brush in a very flat way, I'm going to go across like this. Is John, could you tell Jonathan we need a, another thing printed? 
don't know what's taken so long. Maybe there's no, there's not a problem. Last time this happened, the printer broke. Oh, no. I'll be disappointed. Well, we got this one now. Marilyn would like some more, something else printed now. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here, like with some real out of focus, distant trees. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then you can also just stamp it into the color on your palette there. And I'm going to have it kind of reflecting in the water a little too. I have to take it out of a set. You have you not have the little ones individually. Oh, okay. That's fine. Thank you. So we're going to run out of trees here. I'll do them again later. Thank Jonathan, you. thank you. You're very welcome. And then I, I did this drawing. So now, of course, we don't like that line there. So that's what you do with a, a flat brush. This is called a flat. And I have them, they came from Ireland. They're a whole synthetic series. They're very stiff. They're, they're the best flats I've ever found. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift up this line. This, this silly <coughs> stamp comes with a line. And I mistakenly printed it. Try to avoid it when you're printing. See, I didn't get it up here, but I did get it down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that this has got kind of a misty shore here. And then I'm going to lift out, because this is water, I'm going to lift out some lines in the water. I think most of you have experienced this when you sit on a dock. You see these white lines, and then they, when you go pick this color up, then you can transfer it out into the other part of the water. So pick it up in one place and transfer it to another, and soften some of these edges here where it's kind of along the misty shore. Kind of fun. I actually like this, real misty like this. And then if you want to, you can even have, can you see, you can see the, my brush making that stroke? My paper wasn't quite wet enough. It, I don't mind it, but it could be real irritating. Make sure you wet your paper, really wet your paper. Now, another thing that I think is really cool is Mixing up realism with this, you know, like this super big moon and all that. Now watch this. See, as we're into this distance, you saw me messing around with this. I'm actually creating like the mist and these lines. It takes a really stiff brush to lift anything out of here. And you don't want it to be all the same. So don't make all your lines exactly one quarter inch apart <laughs> and then clean and then I'm just going to have the mist like coming up here and then I'm also going to take the tissue kind of roll it up this is really cool you just take the corner of the tissue and you can roll it up and see with this you can kind of roll a little bit of mist coming up from the base here coming through the trees. So I frequently do this, just to make it look kind of misty, rolling up from the bottom. Yeah, just don't make it cotton ball shape. Rolling down. <laughs> and then the other thing, now if I had popcorn salt, this is where I would use it. It's really, really fine salt. But I'm just going to use what I have. I'm going to put a little salt, but only in the water because I want to have a little bit of a speckly in the water, but that's all. So, this is, I'm happy with this for an underpainting. And now, when this is dry and I take everything off, I'll come in and if I want to draw and section this into some additional lines, I can. So the fun part is coming up. Actually, some parts, when you do an underpainting, the good news is, some parts of your picture are done. If you don't do it under painting, you've got every stroke, you've got more to do. <laughs> so this is really, um, got some areas that I like. I'm very happy with the background here, with the reflections. And I don't really have to do any land because 
very often if there is a mist, it's rising up from the base. So by misting out that part, I don't have to worry about a land. But if any of you stamped them in such a way that they're growing out of the water, you might want to put some land there. My stamp disappeared. <laughs> Is that a real strong It disappeared. Oh, yeah, too wet. Too wet. You needed to wait a little. But just, it's okay. But if, for those of you who wanted to do more, for example, oh, it's too bad. I just cleaned up that I have color, but I can make it again. So here's the deal. What I can do is take my sprayer and mist it. But I, I'm not going to do it now that I think about it, because I'm going to start by painting my moon, and then I will mist it after it dries and put some more trees in front of it. But you can just do that by setting the stage again, either wetting it and waiting, or spraying it with a mist, which is nice, because mists are little dots of water. And then just ink up the same color and put it in, put in the reversal, mm -hmm. and kind of mist it out. In fact, I, my thought was, because this was covered, I was going to treat the trees in, the, in here a little differently than the trees here, just because the moon is there. See, the, these would actually be in shadow. Anytime you have a backlight, they're in shadow. So I'm thinking I can paint similar trees, but like in shadow here. So we'll see. Now the real fun part, I think, is coming up next, and that's identifying this beautiful moon, or sun, or whatever the heck it is. <laughs> and by putting the wax paper on there, you can see I got some texture. And I, I expected that, and I'm happy with it. Now with my paper dry, so that I am in control, I'm going to now go ahead and do some... Can you, if it's not dry, can you dry it over the paper, the wax paper? If, once you get your papers off, you can just dry it directly. Oh. If, it's, if you dry it and you have... Uh, this hasn't set up yet, and the papers blow away, you're, you're buying the purpose. Okay, so I'm going to start with just pure Windsor yellow, and I'm going to paint the moon. Ooh. Because the paper's dry, obviously I'm going to go around the shapes here. And it's kind of fun coming in and seeing all of a sudden now this defining itself. Oh, I wonder how you got it. Now we used Aurelian for the back, but now we're going to use Windsor. For I'm going to use Windsor because it's a little brighter. Okay. And then I'm going to wet it when I get close to the center so that I'm actually, I'm still allowing for the lightest color to be there. So I'm going to go back to the darker color here. So sometimes I just start with the white of the paper, then go into the next layers. But in this case, this is close enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and do about half the moon at once. I want this to be wet when I come in with some more color. So I could choose to come in with some more red and, and have the moon kind of an orangey edge which might be very nice. You often see moons that are that bright, very orangey. I could also come in with Quinn Gold, which is, an, again, a very uh, intense, darker yellow. I think I'll try the uh, gold. So while this half is still wet, I'm going to activate my gold, quinacridone gold. And I like the Daniel Smith product better because it, it's, um, it's, I think it's a much nicer color. So now if I put the gold out on the edge here, while it's still wet, you can see that the edge just flows in and gives me a nice lost edge. And that's what I want, a nice lost edge. So I'm just going to come in here, darkest on the edge, and then I'm just going to let it come in and soften. Now this is a color that doesn't move in water. So very often what I have to do is I have to actually take, wet my brush, shake it out, touch it, and I actually have to come in here and almost like it was on dry paper. See, I have to get that color to blend in. And you'll experience that too. When you work with colors that don't move in water, they, they still, they don't move on a wet surface. So it's hard to get that nice, where it's the gold going into the yellow, going into the light. So I'm going to do these two, and then I'll do the rest of the moon. And 
And it's the same thing here. I'm going to have to get this to blend and slowly make its way. Is that Quinn Bordeaux or really honestly? No, it's the um, Quinn Coral is the color I chose. Oh. So it was areolin, Quinn Coral, yeah. and Cobalt. I got about the moon one. Hugo. 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 Okay. So now I'm going to start again with my Windsor Yellow all the way to the edge. It's the brightest yellow I have. And I'm going to have to decide, am I going to do when I get to the water line? Am I going to go into the water or am I just going to let it kind of go out like, a, like it's reflecting? Mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to go up to the water line and do the reflecting. And now remember, I still want that center light, so I'm starting here with just water and coming in and just allowing this yellow to melt out a little bit lighter in the center. Because I don't want to lose that, see, you can see it up in, you don't want to lose that full focus of light. So if you can start with the white of the paper, then go into the yellow, and then in this case, I'm going to go into my Quinn Gold. And the Quinn Gold is going to be along the edge, the darkest. And if I want to, I'm thinking about going another layer. I could go in with a little bit of coral too if I want and orange it up a little bit. A lot of times the moons are kind of orange. And again, this color doesn't move. Wet my brush, shake it, take the extra moisture out. And just like I were trying to lose this edge, see I'm coming in from here and just getting a nice soft edge. I don't want it to suddenly go from this color to a, a real abrupt lighter yellow. I want it to be kind of a smooth transition, as smooth as I can get it. Did you guys see Noah? He just got a, a haircut. Oh, oh no, I saw him free here. Oh, man. Brad said to me, why are we selling so many of these mini-thirds? So many what? The mini-thirds. <laughs> I said, well, she's pushing them. I'm pushing them. <laughs> I am. I'm going to do one tomorrow, too. <laughs> That's so funny. So they can sit here forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I got the idea to use those. So you can see I'm just giving the water like you would see here. Some of this color is just going to make its way out into the water here. So I'm taking some liberties there. And I'm just going to allow this color to kind of move in here. Okay, and it'll be lighter down here. Now if I want to go into the orange color, I could put, I could take, before this dries, a little bit of this Quinn Coral. This is also a color that doesn't move much. So I think I'm going to try it. Whoa, that was close. Ooh. So I'm going to put just a little of the Quinn Coral out here. And you can see it's not moving. So I'm going to have to deal with it the same way I did the other one. I'm going to wet my brush, shake it out, touch it on a tissue, and coming in from this edge. See how you can lose that? And this happens a lot. You need to know your colors. What colors move in water and which colors do not. And I think this is a good idea because it's giving me a little more. Um, and then it's also relating that color more to this. Anytime you can repeat the same color, it's a good idea. So now I'm going to just come around here and here and here. And the same thing, I'm going to take and just soften this edge. And once more. So that, wow, well, that, ooh, too much. We'll just push it around. <laughs> Tell it who's boss. That's right, show it who's boss. <laughs> I might have to go darker on the other side. Oh, gosh. 
And I'm only going to go as far as the water line come in. Now lose that into a nice lost edge. And this is probably the hardest thing. These doggone colors, I don't, I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. I'd do a wet into wet painting and I'd go, well, how come that color isn't moving? And I finally identified all the colors that move in water and don't move. And it's it's not straight list. across the board, quins don't move, is it? Pretty close. The quins are dye-based man-made colors, and they do, um, do not, they, they don't, generally don't move. Okay. Usually dye-based colors do move, because there's that, but right. they, they don't necessarily move. So the, a lot of them don't. So I'm just going to come in again with a little bit of that reflecting wow. in the water. Soften it out. That's pretty. Thank you. So that's good. We're done now. And then when this dries, I'm going to do these trees in silhouette. And then I'm going to paint these trees later. So now what I want to do is I want to think about my rocks. And I'm not sure if I like that. I might decide to paint, paint it again. Or I might decide to break that moon up. That You can keep changing your mind. You know that. <laughs> How would you break it up? With shapes. Oh, I see. With shapes. So what I want to do now is do some, some of this area right here where we're working with the rocks. And you can see the lovely rock-like textures. And what I want to do when I create these rocks is I want to leave some lighter and I want to do some darker. And it's generally darker behind. So it's kind of nice working with this black and white photo because you can see it's so graphic. And I'm going to make the edge of the rock darker against this because when you have this much light coming from behind, you're actually having a backlit subject. But I'm just going to pretend that moon is bouncing off and there's going to be the lights. So actually by putting so much color in there, I didn't um, leave them as light as they could be, but by the same token, I'm just going to go with what I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so considering we have now the color of Quinn burnt orange and cobalt blue, those are the two colors I used, I'm going to start with the same two colors, Quinn burnt orange, cobalt blue, and I'm going to put them next to each other, just like this. And I'm going to do warmer sometimes and cooler sometimes. And that's how I like to work. It's called the puddle system. There's the cobalt. There's the quin burnt orange. Leave them side by side and then just start pulling the color out as you need it. Sometimes darker, sometimes cooler, sometimes warmer. And so you just pull off the puddle whatever color you'd like. So looking now at this subject, We'll give you a little more view there. So now looking at the subject, you can see how much it would definitely just be necessary to come in and go a little darker. So just about any time you're painting rocks, you've got these triangles that we're working with. And then this one has another root coming down. And then we're crossing over here. I don't know, that's just a pattern in the rock, okay? And then there's more over here and another root. So I'm just simply negative painting around most of this stuff. And you know what I'm going to do? As soon as I don't know what to do, I'm going to fuzz it out. Now you'll also notice that the tree here is lighter than the, the background, but darker over here because this obviously has light coming in from this side. So I can do whatever I want to here, but I think what I'll do is I will go darker along the edge here. A little more blue up here, a little darker, cooler. I see it softening out into the water, that's okay too. <laughs> and then if I want to, I can also come back and put some more wax paper on this. 
So that would be the tree. Does anybody know what happened to my wax paper? Yeah. All right, here, I've got a piece. Thank you very much. We're okay. So I think what I'll do is just put a little wax paper to create even more texture here. Ooh. And we're just going to keep going. So I'm going to come in and form like a, a hard edge here to define these rocks. And soften this edge a bit. And then I want the edge of this rock a little darker against the water line. So I'm going to go a little cooler here and darken the rock. So this is a mixed color. But now I'm going to wet my brush and lose this edge. And then I'm going to just lose this edge, put a little wax paper over it, to see what happens. We'll go even a little darker here. And then a lot of these shapes in here, really, there's all kinds of little rocks. So I could just skip some little parts. You do know nobody can shake the paint off of it. Exactly like you. like you can. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I see class after class. We go like this. <laughs> and she goes, reform smoker, like this. I mean, I've heard it a hundred times. I go, let's reform smoker. So oh, oh like you, that goes way back. Oh. <laughs> you take it and she would. Like a cigarette, huh? I don't know. I, if I had See, like this, this, I would you're be getting, complaining. You're getting the ashes off your See? cigarette. Right. There. There. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm just going to lose these edges because I want the edges to be like a vignette style. Some of these edges I want lost. See, that paint is still wet, so I can come in and lose that edge, leave that hard. Lose this edge, leave the other edge hard. Maybe throw a little wax paper on there to see what it does. So it's sort of a waiting game. Okay. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I, lo I love what wax paper does. And I'm just sort of willing to accept it. So here we go again. We've got the dark coming in from the tree here. And so that will be coming up the tree. And there's little rocks in there, so you can just paint around them, or you can throw the paint on it. <laughs> no, or you can throw the paint. <laughs> just throw a little. But I do think it's nice just leaving a few of those little mysterious shapes, sometimes going warmer. You can see I'm warmer here. Pass that along. Sometimes going cooler, just digging out of my piles here. So keeping it very relaxed. Um, I like that little lost edge that happened. I'm also going to pull this up into some... This is eventually going to be quite dark. So I'll just to give you a little taste. But I'm still going to leave some, some lights. So I'll just lose that. And then even in here, <coughs> There's always lost and found edges. So I just love coming in with my brush, just, just see it's wet, but it's not dripping wet. And if I just rub it a little bit, I'm gonna lose that edge. Lose that edge, lose that edge. Lose a little bit of the edges here and there. And I just love that. And leave some edges found. And we've been talking about that all week. So I really hope that's something you take home with you, an awareness of your edges. Some lost, some found, some warm, some cool, some broken. Remember the holy trinity of edges? Now I'm just going to lose these down here. Not sure what's going to happen. I'm just going to lose them. The I like the fact trinity that there's warm edges? and cool. Pardon? What is the holy trinity of edges? Oh, I was just going to repeat it. It is... 
soft and hard or lost and found and broken. These are broken. We like broken edges too. So see now I'm just going to put this in here and random stick it on. Let it do its thing as I'm moving across. Notice how you have to do this while it's wet. You, if I would have gone all the way across, this would have been too dry. So I'll take some of these off just so you can see what's happening. It's just nice. Mm -hmm. It's giving me some, some lovely textures. I think this needs to be a softer edge here. This needs to be a little bit darker along here. So we'll adjust it all later. But just for now, we've, we've been able to get some additional edges. So I'll come in again and quickly finish this part. I notice I'm getting darker now. I better bookend that color around. Do you still have the, wet, the original wax paper on your rock? No, no. That came off quite a while, right before I even left because I oh, wanted okay. this to dry. Okay, now I'm going to put in some pure Quinn Burnt Orange because I love the glow of that pure color in there. <clears throat> Here we'll do some broken shapes. <clears throat> so just leave a few. Purposely just leave a few there. You can also do it with a dry brush. Remember I talked about how you can dry brush by turning your brush <clears throat> on its side. And that gives you a dry brush. And then we'll just simply lose these edges and we're going to move on. Because I've done the same thing now three times, so you have to do it 18, but <laughs> I'll throw some more broken edges in there. Some more pure color, some more cooler color. And up here too. Now we'll do um, over here. This is going to be fun. We're getting, we're still on the tree. So it's still going to be these shapes going up and down. I can't see the top of the. Oh, so yeah. Thank you. So see, I'm just every now and then I'm coming in and doing a little bit because I want to start seeing that moon in the background. Dripping paint all over. Oh, that'll show me. That'll teach me to show off. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I can soften that, thank goodness. Okay, so we'll come in here, we'll leave a few more broken shapes, and we'll come down, throw in the last pieces here. See, now when things like that happen, that's going to be a good reason to have. Birds. Birds. <laughs> birds. Birds. Isn't that going to be nice? We need birds. Oh, yes. We love it. And this is another, like a thick. So now we'll put the last of our. Do, do we ever find our the wax paper? Yeah, it's right here. Thank you. I know where there's a whole shelf of them. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> uh, thank you. Quote the price. <laughs> 225 I have it on. Well, <laughs> last year's was. 225 Dude, you can get it for less than that at the grocery store. I think it's only $1.30 at the grocery store. Now, I think we're missing a little bit of the moon here, so I'm just going to ad lib a little here. Cool. So you can see that was kind of fun, but anything that's in the backlight is always going to be very dark. So if we were doing total realism, that's what we would have to do. We'd have to let it, we'd make it really, really dark. And the more I see this, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint the, the trees and then decide if I, I might just want to put in some of those shapes. We'll see, but I think coming in here with just the solid trees is going to do it. So you can see now, as this comes off, I'm probably going to make some adjustments, but it is giving me some lovely textures. 
and I, I really love texture. I'm, it's one of the things that appeals to me more than anything. So I'm going to show you how to paint a birch tree, and then we're going to turn the lights on, and you're going to get started. And this is one cool way to paint a birch tree, you guys. Can I ask just one quick question? Absolutely. Um, the wax paper, so it doesn't have to be completely dry when you take it up? Uh, the, the longer you leave it on, the better. Okay. I'm just doing okay. that for your benefit all right, all right. to Thank see. You. And you can see, I can see already that I have some adjustments here that I want this entire edge to be considerably darker. So I would probably come along here and identify this as a darker edge. And one of the, um, yeah, it's, you can see it's so much better to have this darker. So just by losing a few of those edges, I can, I can make it darker anytime I want and then just, you'll be right back to where you were. Now painting a birch tree. There are a lot of ways to paint a birch tree. Number one, a birch tree has a lot of gray in it. And I don't particularly like to work with gray. What I like to do is work with pure color and mix it on the paper. That's basically what we've been doing this entire time. So I'm going to show you of the coolest way there is to paint a birch tree. And that is, first of all, put in the cool color, which is cobalt, and that will make it the shadows, anything round is going to have a shadow side and a sun side. Actually, a tree in front of a backlit like this, yeah. it would all be dark. So I could do it all dark if I wanted to be realistic, but I don't. <laughs> I want to paint it more like a birch tree. So what I'm going to do is use a combination of these same two colors, only this time they're going to mix on the paper. So I'm going to use quinacridone burnt orange, so I've got that activated and I'm going to use cobalt blue. Make sure your colors are nice and fresh and pure. I just, every now and then I have to clean the top of my mine off because I'm sloppy about running it all over the place. So I'm gonna move in closer so you can see what we're doing. Just come down into the basement. That was one of the hardest things about moving around all over the place was you grow up around here, you hear that, you go downstairs. You grow up somewhere else, you have to go upstairs. And yeah, because hurricanes. And then you have to go up. It's very confusing. Okay, now in order to do this, I'm going to use a palette knife. Not too big, just a nice little one that's got a flexible blade. And then I'm going to use a, about a number eight brush, and I'm going to wet the birch tree. Really wet it, not a little bit, really wet it. <clears throat> Just exactly up to the edges. And remember I mentioned that the really thick branches like this are white but the littler branches like this are gonna be black. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a little cobalt blue and just along the edge here, I'm gonna run this cobalt blue where the scars are and you can see because I made them nice and dark, just for you. <laughs> there they are, dark and dark along the edge because this, these are the shadows. And they're going to come in from each side. Now, if my tree were against a dark sky, I would allow for that. But I don't have a dark sky. I've got this big moon. So it basically needs to have something happening on each side. This is a very large scar. I never realized those were scars. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to happen, too on the, this branch. So again, we're going to come in. It's going to be really dark where the scar is. And then a little bit on each side because that's how we're going to identify the edge of this. A little darker on the edges coming in from each side. And there's always more, more scars when you get next to the branch that's coming in. 
So see, your tree should look pretty nice right now. Yeah, it does. This is, these are the shadows. Now I need to, it's got to be so wet that when I touch this edge, it rolls. Can you see that? It's rolling. The answer is yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I have to tip this to get it to roll. And you saw how wet that was. But it did, I'm pretty happy with the way it rolled, and I'm real happy with the fact that I still have white. Now, what I'm going to do next is put this orange color on top of the blue. Not next to it, not on one side, and blue on the other. No. On top. <laughs> on top? I'll give her a few thumbs. <laughs> well, I have a painting with my birds that I... It, it, and I look at it every day. This is 1992, so I'm, I'm going, okay. You know. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, so now when I come in with the Quinburnt Orange and my pointed brush, bottom number eight, I'm going to do it exactly pretty much where I did it before, right along the edge. It's rolling. And see, what this does is it neutralizes now. There's a little that flows beyond because this some colors, they move differently in water. So... This is basically going to neutralize the color that's there. And I might even give some of the color, some of this color its own space. Because very often if you look at a birch tree, you actually have the um, really warm, warm color there. It's beautiful. Oops, these should have been moved out. Oh well. Notice that. So here too I'm going to come up. I'm going to make this darker towards the end. And so now I'm just putting this on top of the blue. And I hope that makes sense to you. Remember, you put, you put colors, orange and blue are complements. When you put complements together, that's how you get grays. So if I'm painting in Spain and I want to paint a white house, I want to put in gray shadows. I take cobalt blue and Windsor orange and mix them together and I get a beautiful gray. So that's how it works. So now we have the birch tree with the neutralized color and this is where the fun comes in. I take a palette knife and push it with, from the white back to the edge. And this, this is a um, trick. When I was an oil painter, this is how I painted birch trees. I got to thinking, why can't I do that now? So I'm just going to go from the white back to the edge of the paper. See what it did? It, it gave me that lovely white. Do it again. Oh. Push it back again. So you push from the white back to the edge. Oh. Okay. From the white back to the edge, and you're actually exposing more white. And see, these birch trees actually do this. They, the bark kind of peels off. Where do you hold it? I've never used a palette knife. Hold Just got a, okay. a grip all. And I'm, now I'm going to start from the white and push back here. And see, all this extra paint, I just leave it there. <coughs> Isn't that just awesome? This is one of my favorite paints. Oh, Isn't that good? It's really cool. cool. And see, even here I can pick up some of this color and make the scar even more pronounced. From the white back, from the white back. And see, this is still reading as a birch tree, but it's dark against the moon. And that's what I was hoping for. And then now I've got a few more places here. Always from the white back, white back, white back. So it's you kind of start in the middle and go to the edge. And I can even do it here. Make this a little whiter. Now I'm going to mix a very dark color. And it's going to be... Quinacridone burnt orange. 
very rich color and French ultramarine blue. Very dark, you can see it, value nine. See how much darker that is than that. So this is going to give me all the way to black. So when I mix these two together, and if I add more French ultramarine blue, I actually have black. And I, I use this combination because these colors are actually liftable. If I do something I don't like, I can lift it out again. Whereas if I had used a lizard crimson and phthalo green, that would give me a staining color that I could not ever lift. So now using this color in a very small brush, I've got a little number two, number one, whatever it is, now they both the work. Quinacridone burnt orange Video. and cobalt. No, no. French, ultramarine. French ultramarine. French ultramarine and quinacridone burnt orange, and it gives me a black. So now using a very small brush, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make the scars darker. And see, a lot of times the scars actually have little, there's little, if you want to go realistic, there's actually those little slits. And this is where you would make your branches really dark. They're literally black. So we can pull those out. And, and you can go as far as you want with detail on that. But it is nice to see those dark, dark black, almost black coming out. And then I would do the scars just a little bit darker throughout the tree, especially where you have the scars next to the branches. And see, even this branch would be a lot darker because it's still relatively thin. Boy, they've never had this many flies in here. They're fierce. They're fierce. Sand flies. So that's it. Isn't that fun? Birch tree. So I think if you can just kind of put, really decorate your painting with a lovely birch tree, and here's a dry brush. This is kind of weird. I'll figure something out there. What actually is that? <laughs> I was looking at a picture and they, they actually... <laughs> it's not a Chris says it's a tree it's a bird. Bird. <laughs> It's a mistake. We're going to figure it out. Okay. Now, the, I have talked about doing these trees in a uh, silhouette. This is gutsy. I'm going to do it. So I am now going to take my flat brush, my paper's dry, and I'm going to use my little stamp, same stamp I used over here, one, inch, one half inch flat brush, and I'm going to use this dark, and it's indigo blue mixed with quin gold. That's what I used here. Quin gold and indigo blue. And see that combination, quin gold and indigo blue, gives you a very gray green. Gold and a little indigo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and stamp this. Oh. This time I'm not going to put that little line I was complaining about. Don't do the line. And I'm just going to stamp it about here. There they are. <laughs> Pretty funny. Going to do some more. Same combination, Quinn Gold, Antwerp Blue. No. Indigo. Oh, I'm sorry, indigo. indigo. Thank you very much. Quinn Gold and Indigo. And then just going to come in here. <laughs> This time I'm going to stamp it. See, look at this is cool. Right, right on my oh, tray. There you go. Yep, right on my tray. I'll come across here. 
that's oh. it. Now I have to ad lib the rest. The staff did all the work. Now I got to do something. <laughs> so I need to put it on a little land. So I'm going to take a little, little bit of this color. I'm going to have it on the land. And then it's going to reflect in the water a little bit. Now, I don't want it so perfect. I'm going to do just a little spray. And see, this one stamped, I like this better. This stamp got a little dry. So I'm just going to kind of wet it a little bit, fuzz it a bit. So it doesn't look like I used the same stamp three times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a good idea. Yeah, no, they'll never know. <laughs> you could even take, imagine this, you can take like a little size two brush, see, and you put paint on the end of it. <laughs> What's that called? <laughs> and then you spray into it. See, that's what I'm going to have to do over here. Either that or protect the trees, because I'm going to carry this, this little tree silhouette all the way across. Oh. Now I want to I want to use this water. So I'm just going to pull this down with a little bit of the, like reflections. So first of all I'm going to wet it. I'm wet the edge here and wet the water. And I still want it a little bit fuzzier. Spray again. And now I'm just going to pick up this little bit and see the trees themselves would come down like a line in the water. So wherever I've got, this one's tipped a little. This is a big, this is a major tree here. So where these are reflecting in the water, the first thing I'm going to do is capture the lines. And I don't know how much of this you guys want to do, but it's kind of fun. So you only have to capture the lines and, and tip, tip them a little bit. There's a whole bunch of them there. And then what you do is you clean your brush and now you come in and lift out big gobs of them. So then you, you kind of fuzz the water around like you're picking up the wave action. And even if you only get a few of them, it's good enough. Just to give the impression that they're reflecting. And that's it. It's kind of fun. And then I could even put a little salt in there. I don't know if that's a good idea. And I could even do one other thing, and that is I could add the start of another tree here, because this was a really good batch of trees. <laughs> but I couldn't stamp this one. <laughs> now, why would those trees be um, reflecting positive when you have mist on the other side? Does, I, if they wouldn't. This is artistic liberty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Smarty. Yeah, the sun's on the behind, so. No, but... And then I'm going to have fun. You know, I don't like this. This is a liftable color, and I, I should show you how to get rid of that. You take, if any of you have, start showing off like I did, and then you throw some paint that ends up where you don't want it. This is a little tricky, but you just take Q-tips, and you dampen it. And then a lot of people think, oh, I'll just take a tissue and rub it. Well, what you do is rub it in real good. Yeah. But if you have a damp Q-tip, and you just come with a, a motion where you're lifting, always lifting, going around, and trying to equally lift away a little bit of this and a little bit of the paint around it, very often you can lift, you can get it. And even here, if I had to see, you, but you constantly are turning this Q-tip. See how it went on the Q-tip? 
but not on turd be gone. Yep, there you go. But it leaves a little white, so you have to then you have to really kind of make it look like there's just a light area there. So the best thing to do is to actually make them into birds. <laughs> turd to a bird. From a turd to a bird. <laughs> There's your next book. <laughs> Watercolor from a turd to a bird. Oh, I like it. Good job. I don't know what I do without you guys. Okay, so we'll move this out. You can get the full Monty, so to speak. <laughs> We'll make some room here. Remember, you always want to look at your piece. You should always have working mats in your studio. So you can look at your piece in a mat. And these mats get all beaten up. Even if I have a customer in here, I, I show them these all beaten up mats around my picture because it's such a difference. And then that way they can make a decision. I actually sell a lot of paintings out of my studio. People like to meet the artist, see something mm. Finished and so you should have at least a if whatever size you work in you should always have just a single mat it doesn't have to be double and uh, that's kind of cool well I do like the idea of coming in with the darker behind the moon there just for a little fun and in front I, of the moon. I pardon in front of the moon <laughs> what did I say behind the moon well yeah behind this in front of the moon right. thank you. <laughs> And now when I do this tree, I could actually lift out some of the color with my knife to become some of the bark. So if you want to be kind of textural, you just put the color down and then push it back and forth. So I'll do one real little quick little area and then we'll get started. Again, I like to start with the, the, just the color. So like this is the, um, let me get this out of the way. This would be the pure orange and then I'll just wet that edge because I like having some light in the middle Then I'll come in with the pure blue right over the top knowing that's going to neutralize it but it's also going to give me some of that glowing color can you see the glow of both colors this is why I like to do it's not flat it's beautiful I'll come in closer and you can actually see the glow. It's beautiful. I love that. Is that the cobalt blue or the cobalt? Cobalt and quinacridone burnt orange. You put it on separately, one over the other, and you always get a little glow. Mix it together and put it on flat. See the beautiful oranges here and blues? And now this is a kind of tree that goes up and down. So if you want to, you can just do this. And you can create the bark. Does it make no. any difference if you lay down one of the colors before the other? Nope. But um, just generally speaking, like if I have a whole group of birch trees, mm -hmm. which often happens, I have a whole bunch of birch trees, what I do is I paint the birch trees in the foreground with more orange because warm colors come forward. <coughs> so when I wet it, I do the orange first on the first trees because you usually are dominant with the first color you use. And then as I go back, I do the back trees by putting the blue on first and then the orange over the top. And I try to keep that in mind so you've got warm coming forward, cool going back. I think I write that down every single time. <laughs> See, I depend on you guys forgetting. This is <laughs> absolute job security for me. More <laughs> so my painting is dry now, and all the students have gone home. <laughs> and I'm in the quiet of my studio thinking about how I'd like to finish this piece. And one of the first thoughts I had was, there's kind of a loneliness about it. I, I really feel I'd like to do, like maybe add some, some birds sitting out here on the rock. And then I also got the idea that I'd like to add some birds flying around out here in and out of this big circle of light. So I've got these birds that I've drawn on a sheet of acetate. And it's kind of fun. It gives me some idea of the scale that I'd like. 
and so I'm going to go ahead and draw in some of those. The other thing is, is my fascination with roots. Now, this was the inspiration for my drawing. It was actually a beautiful photograph taken years and years ago, and all I have of it now is this black and white rendition. So I quickly used this as my first drawing. But now it's time for me to come in and develop some dark and light patterns and identify the roots a little better. So I've been getting my pencil out here and coming in with some more roots, maybe breaking up some more sections in the rock and adding some, adding some darks. And this fascination with roots goes way back. I live right along lake sh the lake shore, big Lake Superior. So as I as I paddle along the shore, I frequently will stop and take pictures of these beautiful roots that have been exposed after years and years of, of uh, rain and whatever, wind. This was from a trip to South Africa, and you can see just the incredible root system of this tree. I was actually painting this beautiful scene of water, and I looked out the window, and here were, here were these roots. That was it. I couldn't paint water after I saw those roots. And so every time I see roots, especially roots and rocks, I find it a very appealing subject. Here's a beautiful one that I've painted many times. In fact, I did this in Ireland with a group of ladies, and they put in little fairies and leprechauns throughout the piece. That was, that was really fun. And then here's a, a picture, too, that I did combining the roots with powdered charcoal. And this is going to be a lesson that I'll be sharing with you at a later time. So for now, I'm going to go back, finish my drawing, and then we'll speed it up and you'll get to see me finish the painting. So I'm ready to get started here with finishing. I'm just going to mostly be working with my quinacridone burnt orange and cobalt. And this will give me a fairly dark, either brown or very cool brown. But it will never get real dark because cobalt is not a value 9. So I'm also going to work with a quinacridone burnt orange with French ultramarine blue. Now both of these are value 9 and I should be able to get really really dark with this. And I think that's going to be the final darks that I'll need. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this and um, it will be speeded up so you can darks, especially anything backlit is is dark. It's in shadow. And that's, we're taking quite a few liberties already just by putting in some of that light. But you can see now I pulled the dark throughout this tree, gave it some texture. And I probably will come in and add just a little bit more dark to this, just because it wouldn't be that much light. And then I still need some more darks underneath the rocks here as we're leading our way down. Add some more roots here and there. But my whole goal is to make it pretty much 
a vignette style. As we get to the bottom here, I'm just going to let the edges melt out. Because this whole thing would be very, very dark. So I'm already taking some liberties just coming in with the, this added lights. Another thing is I decided to silhouette the rock here. So I'm going to come out here with some dark. And here. And then I'm just, again, going to lose this edge. I'm going to keep some light here. And these little birds, oh, they're so cute. I drew them in. I'm glad I thought of this idea. And I'm just going to use my script brush and basically keep them quite, quite dark. So I'm, I'm putting just about everything in this dark mixture. And I think it's kind of a good idea to add just a little bit of some real life here. There really are birds <laughs> that live here. And his little tail is quite dark. And then I'm just going to come in with some grays. So you can see me here mixing a little Windsor orange and cobalt blue into a nice gray. And I'll just basically put his head in a gray tone and then just decide how dark I want to go with it. I guess I want to be darker. Same with this other bird. I'm going to come in, make it quite dark. <laughs> these guys. I wanted some of the birds to be intersecting with the edge of the, the sun or moon shape. So I purposely am breaking out here. big deal. And I think I'm even going to add some little suggestions here of birds off in the distance.
there you have it. I think uh, that pretty much tells the story. presentation. Okay, finally, oh, a few more items to add. There we go. There you go. The final presentation. Hope you enjoyed it.